Hi everyone, it's Tatiana from Ginger and you're watching Loudwire. We're going to be talking about how you learned to scream today. So I got to know, what was the first time you ever heard an extreme metal vocal? Ooh, I won't, I won't tell you because I really don't remember the first time that I heard um, these kind of uh, ex like vocals, like the, this technique. But surely I remember when I heard a woman back into 2000 and, um, three maybe or two or one i don't remember really when i, I remember i was uh, 15 or 16 and i first heard otep band okay. like my friend showed me uh, their music and stuff and um, i was like oh my god well i like this this dude's attitude you know and my friend just was like no daddy it's it's a girl I was like, shit, are you seriously? I seriously, and I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. <laughs> so what was it like for you attempting your first ever scream? Well, after that um, like moment, I heard um, Otep screaming and a um, couple more women, you know, and um, I was like, all right, well, let's try. It seems like it's easy but and then it was winter and it was i remember 8 p.m and um it was like 15 degrees below zero and me and that friend who showed me otep uh we went to the outskirts and um i started just screaming at um cars that were passing by i practiced one song it was dig by mud mud vein it was mud vein that actually i <laughs> i took lessons and i hated i hated how my voice sounded that moment i was like oh my god i suck <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah and i was a little bit confused not a little bit i was confused and uh, disappointed with myself i was like dude well i was wrong it's not that easy it's not that easy and um yeah so, and so what was missing from that scream was it tone was it the depth was it not as deep as you expected it to be everything everything <laughs> basically well it feel it felt like i i was doing it right like you know basically screaming like you, you open up your throat you know or whatever i still don't know how it works <laughs> and um but it was like really shitty well you, you probably heard how like women or girls try to do this for the first time it's like <gasps> like something like this you know like absolutely no technique at all and that sucked yeah so then i realized when after after like a million of um uh, 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 like rehearsals, you know, practicing and practicing mm -hmm. in the rehearsal room, like in practice room with with the band. Then how I I realized that it it works this way. You have to do it with musicians, not in front of uh, in front of a mirror. Ah, and also yeah, um, when it was not that cold. Oh no, when it was really like colder than. 15 degrees below zero well i stayed at home i actually cut classes in my university mm -hmm. and i stayed at home and uh, screamed in a pillow you sometimes can tell that oh it's a woman screaming and that's what i didn't want to hear about myself you know i tried to imitate more male uh, version of screaming and growling now yeah. when you were first practicing doing the rehearsal screaming into a pillow uh what was the reaction from your family that you were making all these insane noises uh luckily my parents um worked all week through you know um and i was home alone the whole time until like till like 
3 p.m. when my father used to come back from work. Mm -hmm. So that's why I didn't go to you know, to my like university or institute. Um, so I missed some classes just to do that, <laughs> to practice, you know. <laughs> they, they would probably think that I'm like, possessed. You mentioned that you practice in rehearsals. Uh, was Ginger the first band that you were practicing with or did you have another band before that where you were really trying all these techniques out? Yeah, basically I had, uh, before Ginger, I had like eight bands. And some of them, like I had four bands at the same time where I sang. Um, there were like uh, punk, punk rock, ska, reggae, funk, uh, trash core, and uh, mm. yeah, the, the, the whole packet. <laughs> and um, the first band that I tried, but I failed, and I actually tried to imitate Sandra, Sandra Nasic from Guano Apes, if you heard of that band. Miles away from us. Uh, but then I failed, it was like, no, and I was too shy to do it even in, in front of my bandmates. So it sounds like all those early bands, a lot of the different styles that you were dabbling in all kind of eventually made their way into Ginger a little bit. Um, yeah. Now, were you experimenting with lower gutturals, higher screams, and trying to work out the different dynamics and the range of your voice during this time too? Mm -mm. I, I just tried not to, not to my voice up you know not to not to cough blood <laughs> which styles gave you the most difficulty when you started expanding especially live it's difficult to sometimes go from those low screams to the higher screams and then transition to singing so in which area did you struggle the most this is the thing like vocals especially especially extreme vocals it's the thing that you cannot own forever i mean there's something that kind of like if you don't practice it or if you overkill it you know if you do it like every day and uh, like doing it too much it start to slip through your fingers and I'm like, oh, you're losing it and i uh, believe me i've i've lost that few times right now it's pretty hard and uh, i think that's because um, my clean vocals uh they they got really complicated too like with really high pitch notes and um that's what affects the whole the whole picture um yeah so you remember it's not like uh, learning to ride bicycle mm -hmm. it's it's not that's forever <laughs> enunciating um is this something that is important to you and for me it's very important because i spent the hell of a bunch of hours writing those lyrics uh, plus, you know, especially when uh, English is not my uh, native language. So I choose every single word just to strike right into a bull bullseye. <laughs> you know? And uh, that's why it's very important for me to pronounce every single word when I scream and um, uh, grow correctly and clearly. Now let's talk about copying the mic. Uh, it's a little bit controversial. Yeah. Uh, where do you stand on it? Cupping. Always. <laughs> <laughs> Always and forever. I'll never, probably, I'll, I try, but it feels really weird for me to, ha to hold this thing like that. You know, I feel like I'm uh, like somewhere in uh, like r Russian pop star from 70s. <laughs> Uh, yeah, announce announcing something, you know, <laughs> or whatever, like, oh, or I'm at, at the wedding or something. So, so it goes until the day you die. It it's, it looks aggressive. It sounds uh, aggressive, and um, it's just like my tiny hand. It just slips up to the actual like dynamic. I, and yeah, I cannot get rid of it. I just can't. Is there anything you specifically avoid doing before you have to play a show? Like avoid eating a big meal or something like that? Oh, no drinking beer, no um, chips, okay. you know, like potato chips. Mm -hmm. Nothing that can uh, scratch your in, inside of your throat. 
yeah and beer because you don't want to burp all, all the time in the middle of of the word <laughs> of a word and um yeah and i really avoid sleeping right before the show are there anything any pre-show rituals or certain things that you need to have before you play a show for your voice what i really need to have is my warm-ups because i never never use them <laughs> uh, because you know it's it's really i'm too lazy and uh, probably i i am too self confident that oh my god i don't need it that's how i used to think but then i changed my mind i try not to talk after shows and before shows and uh, i skip uh sound checks mm -hmm. sometimes when i feel like you guys i need to say that uh and also oh and also i got like when i was in the u uh, in the u.s like recently i found like in some drugstore i found a spray like singer's spray for vocalists mm -hmm. it's like non-alcohol um stuff and you know what it really helped really helped i i used that before like uh, recording some covers and um during uh, our practicing and stuff yeah mm -hmm. it really helped so i'd probably use i i really want to give it a try during tours now what about going on tour for the first time i'm talking not like a week or two weeks but like you know a 30 day plus tour um what did you see different in your voice from the beginning of the tour to the end of that tour like um i start from hell because the first day is just like like i'm i feel like i'm a baby baby lamb walking you know just <laughs> Just was born and then yeah learning how to walk and uh, the last day usually we do like yeah 30 days or even more like I remember there was a tour with like 40 something shows so the last day is just like I'm an old old as lamb ready to die <laughs>